Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Revelations chapter 3 and I'd like to read verse 14 again and we'll go as far as verse 22 but when we begin to study we will only go two or three of the verses for tonight I know me unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans right verse 14 this thing says the Amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot I would thou art cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot I will spew thee out of my mouth because Thou sayest, I am rich, and have increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed that the shame of your nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eyes salve that thou mayest see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent behold I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and I'm set down with my father in his throne he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches may the Lord bless his word to our hearts even tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, I spent time to look at the introduction that the Lord Jesus gave of himself and the general overview of this message to the church of the Laodiceans and the peculiar issues that jumped out even without doing any elaborate study peculiar issues that you cannot ignore but tonight we want to start looking at the content the content what are the issues of lukewarmness so if you want and say what is the title of our message tonight we're going to be looking at parameters of lukewarmness the constituent parameters of lukewarmness when will you know that lukewarmness is beginning to set into your life into your spirit into your faith when will you know 
that I am getting lukewarm. What are the indices of lukewarmness? The constituent parameters of lukewarmness. But if you like, what are the indications of lukewarmness? And you will not be able to speak about lukewarmness because I want to inform you by nature, by the definition of lukewarmness, lukewarmness is an in-between position. If I had a blackboard now and were in a classroom, I would have shown you what uh, lukewarmness sincerely is. And that's why it is difficult to identify. Lukewarmness is the intersection between two sets. If you have done a little of mathematics and you learned set theory when you were in secondary school, when two sets intersect, when two distinct sets come together and they mix, the point of intersection, something about it is that you will see a bit of this set here, you will see a bit of that set, but in that intersection. So you are unable to say it belongs to this or it belongs to that. So when you talk about lukewarmness, Lukewarmness is a deceptive situation. Deceptive in the sense that you cannot safely locate it in one place. Are you listening to me? Lukewarmness is a combination of heat and cold at the same time. It is a manifestation of spirituality and carnality mixed at one spot. Are you getting me? It is a mixture of that which appears holy, but at the same time, at the same time, accommodating that which is unholy. Lukewarmness what makes it difficult that makes even the Lord Jesus Christ to say something that I kept wondering why he said it. Now I know. You know what he said? He said, I actually wish you choose whether to be hot or to be cold. You see, the deception of lukewarmness is a desire to belong to two countries at the same time. The desire to be here and to be there at the same time. The complication of lukewarmness is the fact that you see the traces, the traces and very desirable traces of spirituality. You like it. But just when you are about to grab it and say, yes, I thank God, this brother is spiritual, without notice, without notice, you see something from the kingdom of darkness in Taloki. So you don't know where to classify this man. Those who meet him in the realm of spiritual, they will say, we have never seen a man like this. Very spiritual. But those who meet him on the other side of carnality, they say, don't mind him. He's a devil. Are you getting the little definition I'm trying to bring about now? So, lukewarmness 
is a manifestation of an intersectory spirit. A spirit that wants to pick here and pick there and mix up in one basket. So while we are sitting here, you will begin to check what are the indices of lukewarmness that is beginning to manifest in my life. Before I go ahead, let me tell you one more issue about lukewarmness before I go on dealing with it. Lukewarmness is a complicated state of heart. It is a heart that is unable actually I would like to say it's a coward heart that he is too ashamed to say no to Jesus but he is too ashamed also to say no to the devil are, we, are you following me if you say, are you, are you for Jesus? He say, how can I not be for Jesus? <laughs> but when the men from the kingdom of darkness ask him, are you also a fanatic with them? He said, uh, mm -mm, no. I'm a Christian, but a Christian with understanding. <laughs> do, do, do you understand that now? don't take anything to extreme. A lukewarm person is not bold enough to be a heavy drunkard. So what, you will never see him to be a heavy drunkard. But he does not think if he goes into a meeting and they close the table with beer and gouda he will be too ashamed to ask for Fanta. Are you, are you understanding that now? He said, well, you know, I love Jesus, but I also love people. So, I don't want Gouda. Just give me Dubonet. Dubonet is in between alcohol and minerals. <laughs> Are you understanding that now? Now, a lukewarm fellow wants something of Jesus. He also wants something of the devil. Are you understanding that now? A lukewarm fellow is a double-faced person. He has a face that is attractive to Jesus and to the people of God. But he has also a face that is not offensive to Satan and to his people. Are we together? So he can fit in any time. A lukewarm fellow is diplomatic. You know what, is, what when I say it's diplomatic? You cannot pick him at any point. If you said, did you say something? Say, well, it depends on how you hear it. <laughs> he cannot stand to be counted for God because he cannot face the consequences. And he is not bold enough to say, away with Jesus. If I go to hell, I go to hell. No. So he is such a person. He comes to church. Are you hearing me? He comes to church. If church service is between 7 and 9.30, 
he prefers that. So that by 10, he could attend another meeting. This meeting where we can do anything. He said, God, you won't blame me. I already gave you your own time. This is my own time. Am I painting a picture to you about a lukewarm person? Because immediately we talk of lukewarmness, some of you think I'm going to bring a temperature a thermometer to start measuring your temperature and say, is it hot, is it cold, is it lukewarm? I want to inform you that maybe we may have a thermometer to measure your temperature, but there are more parameters that speaks about lukewarmness. And the last thing to say before I go on, that lukewarmness can happen to anybody. It can happen to the greatest preacher. And it can happen to the young convert. In fact, several, several preachers are still preaching, but they have become lukewarm. So preaching does not necessarily reveal how lukewarm a man is or how hot he is. Because part of the indices of, of, of uh, lukewarmness could even be preaching. Preaching so as not to discover the other side of the preacher. You are not getting me at all. A preacher was messing up with some sisters in his church. He was sleeping with them. And when the girls, for the first time, were surprised, they said, what? You know, you're, ah, ah. no, it's a cool down. Is it because you're a recent convert? When we do such things, anointing flows more. When he finished messing up with the girl, he told her to relax. She will see how the spirit moves. And put her in the car and they went for a meeting. And as he stood up, you know, people were singing and dancing and all of this. And he stood up like this. And he did some few things and began to blow into the microphone. And began to do like this. And people were falling under the anointing. When he finished, he called the gate. Did you see? So you see, lukewarmness... By virtue of its definition, it contains hot and cold at the same time. Are you getting me? It contains anointing and annoyance at the same time. You are not hearing me at all. This man has anointing, but he also has annoyance. So sometimes you say, Come on, say yes, God is going to move now. And then when you do something, you say, I will, I will curse you here. I will curse you. If I curse you, you will never come out of that. You may think he's a fiery preacher. He's lukewarm. He's lukewarm. Why? We are seeing two sides, two different sets mixing together in his life. It's an intersection of hot and cold. What makes a lukewarm person difficult is because he is the most deceptive and deceived man that you could ever meet. Do you know why? Because whatever you are looking for in those that are very spiritual, you see a bit of it in him. And what you are not expecting to see in a spiritual person, which you are expecting among the drunkards and among terrible sinners out there, you see a bit of it in him, and everything is mixed together. Now, the Lord Jesus was looking at these people. He said, I know your works. 
I know I know that you are neither cold nor hot. Now, when Jesus put it like that, that you are neither cold, this is the problem. He is neither cold. If you want to preach to people that are cold, he is not in their class. When you want to speak to about people that are hot for the Lord, he is not in their class. When you give out a call and say, all of you that are, that are seriously against God, come out. A look one person say, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not against God. I actually love God. I love God. It's only that I don't take my own Christianity to what? To the extreme. I love God. I will never say Jesus is not Lord. Jesus is the Lord. It's lukewarmness that made people to convert the songs that we sing in the church. They converted it as songs they sing in the Palm Wine Drinkers Club. Are you hearing me? Yes. He knows the Bible, but he's also a drunkard. Hallelujah. It is lukewarmness that makes a man, he could be in this fellowship for years, nothing particularly touches him because he is in between. Now, it will look as if it's a good position to be. But I want to inform you. It's the most difficult and dangerous position anybody could stand in relationship with going to heaven. Apart from our local proverbs that says, when you go hunting, if you see two rats, jump out from a hole. What do you do if you want to catch anyone? Eh? You must decide to chase one and let the other one go. But if you decide to chase the two rats at the same time, <laughs> how many will you catch? You will catch nothing. You will catch nothing. I want to say to you, the danger of lukewarmness is that it gives you an impression that you have a seat on this side and on that side not knowing that as far as heaven is concerned you have no seat with God. So tonight it is with very deep conviction that I want you to genuinely check as we begin to trace what are the indications or what are the indices of lukewarmness when it begins to manifest when it begins to come into a man's life and I'm saying to you that a lukewarm person there are two ways to become lukewarm can I tell you the two ways to become lukewarm is either that is this person is very cold, is fridge, is from the fridge, and then you bring insufficient heat. You just bring something that is hot, but it's not hot enough to raise it to a boiling point. You drop it into into something that is coming from the fridge. What does it become? Eh? It becomes lukewarm. So a lukewarm person could be someone that is supposed to be converted but with incomplete conversion. And there are some of you, honestly speaking, that you actually, you are coming from a terrible place of, of freezing cold. Nothing interests you about God before. But 
somehow you came in touch with something that is exciting but it was not sufficient for your conversion so you have embraced a little part of of christian life but that was not sufficient to thoroughly translate you from the kingdom of darkness from the place of sin from the place of your weakness and translate you into the kingdom of their of, of his their son cleanly you have learned some good language of the word of god you've tried to attend fellowship you've tried to join the choir but it was insufficient to give you a genuine conversion so you are you are not as cold as you used to be but you have not gone far so a lukewarm person can be a genuine person coming from the cold freezer of the of the power of sin but didn't have sufficient encounter with the power of god has to change him completely he is lukewarm now but a lukewarm person could be one who had been very hot before but due to lack of continuous fire dissipation energy loss has taken place to the point that because there's no continuous increase of fire the temperature of that life is coming down gradually, 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 gradually. Now, you see that person, you know the language said, oh, when we started the fellowship, when the Spirit of God was moving, when we went everywhere shaking the land, oh, God, when I used to fast, Every time you hear him say, when I used to, when I used to, when I used to, when I used to, who is that man? It's a lukewarm person. He's been hot before, but loss of fire, lack of continuing, con continuous burning has reduced his heat and he has come into this middle stage where the things he could never, never tolerate when he used to have fire are beginning to sneak into his character. So, those are the two ends where you can get lukewarmness. Am I, have I communicated with you now? Do you think I can go ahead? Eh? All right. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I wish, that's how Jesus put it. He said, I wish that you are either cold or hot. I was wondering why Jesus would wish that somebody should be cold. Or should be hot. As if Jesus said, I prefer if you are cold, let me know that you are cold. If you are hot, let me know you are hot. But that you are in between, neither hot nor cold, I don't like it. I will do what? I will spill you out of my mouth. I'm not going to talk about the repercussion of a lukewarm life. I'm not ready to talk about that tonight. I'll deal with that when God brings us back. I'm just dealing with indices. How will I know when I'm beginning to be lukewarm? How will I know when I have got incomplete conversion experience that only makes me a lukewarm Christian? How do I know when my fire has reduced in its intensity because of lack of continuity of burning. How will I know? How will I know? How will I know? In the scriptures that we have read, 
and some other scriptures that we are going to refer to later on. The parameters are quite, quite, you know, apparent. And let's look at it. And it begins from verse 17. I said you should please keep verse 16 because I will conclude with it when I'm ready. Verse 17. And one of the things that was very paramount and is always paramount about a lukewarm person. Because thou sayest. You say. You wonder, is that, is that a parameter? I want to tell you, that is the first parameter. What is that parameter? Exaggerated sense of your importance. Praise the Lord. When your confession, what you say, is bigger than who you are, is the first parameter of lukewarmness. Do you know that if a man is hot, does he need to say, I am hot? Why? Eh? You see, when a man is hot, he doesn't need to say. People will see it. Eh? You cannot come near a hot person and not get burnt. You cannot come near a person and you cannot come near a cold ice and you touch it and you don't know that you touch something cold. Is it possible? Eh? It's not possible. The first quiet parameter of lukewarmness is exaggerated speaking about yourself. Genuine people that are working with God they don't talk too much about themselves. Even the English people say it is the empty barrels that does what? That makes the loudest of noise. When something has finished in your life, you take a long time to talk about yourself. When there is no more substance in your spirit, then in order to create impression, you know there is a great difference between expression and impression. When a man is no more having substance that can express itself by itself, he enters into creating impression with his mouth. Whenever I meet a man, whether a preacher or a singer, that does not allow his action to speak louder than his voice, I know already his fire has reduced. If I have to tell you, you know, <laughs> hey, God is using me, it means that something is wrong with me. If fire is burning in my life, fire does not speak, it burns. Enters anybody's cloth here. Can you sit down? Why? Why? You will say, Yeah! Oh! Yeah! 
aha. That's a man bunny. Some years ago, I was driving out of Kasnala. I was coming out. And I came to the bridge. And they were trying to make road. I didn't know that that quota that they used to pour, I didn't know that it's black fire. Don't play with it when you see them pour it. All. So while they were pouring this quota, I don't know what happened to this young man. Whether he fell down into it or somebody mistakenly poured it on him, I don't know. Uh, I've never seen bombs like that before. The whole of his skin from the neck down, peeled, he was white. You see, I was driving my car. The man has no courtesy to beg me. You know what he did? He just, I'm still driving, I've not yet stopped. He just opened the, 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 the front door of my car and jumped in. I said, fire! Fire! Hospital! Fire! Hospital! I don't know how myself turned. You can't stay with a man on fire. <laughs> and remain normal. It's not possible. It's not possible. You see, one of the things that bothers me is that there are many of you who claim to be on fire. You are making a whole hell of noise. Five of you, ten of you, twenty of you with loudspeakers shouting Hoya ba 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 koro bo 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 sanda kara ba 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 Ten people are shouting to the microphone doing like this. And the campus remains dead. I said, this is a dangerous, there's a problem here. By the time that man jumped into my car, nobody advised me where to turn. The speed with which I got to the general hospital, I couldn't remember that I was one who drove like that. When I got to the hospital, did I finish parking before the man jumped down? A man of fire is not normal. Some of you that are a little older, when Christ came into our lives, hey, we were mad. Look, when Jesus Christ came into our lives, nobody told us which dress not to wear. We just knew that this dress that I was wearing for the devil, I can't wear it again. And we didn't think we should even give it to someone else. You just woke up, you carried all those clothes and you put fire on it. Your mother, your father, your uncles, their kind, they say, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? If you don't want to wear it, give it to me. He said, no. He said, what's wrong with you? Part of the persecution that characterized our life in those days was our erratic reaction to what Jesus has done in our lives. There was fire. I'm afraid that there's no fire. There was noise. So where there is more noise than fire is a manifestation of what? The woman. Let me ask you. Do you talk louder than your, the content of your life? 
are you more interested on the platform than the, the reality of your inner man? When this man got to that, he got to OPD, he caused confusion. All the nurses that were sitting like this, they said, okay, write your name. Did he wait to write his name? Fire! Yeah! Oh! Hey! Before anybody knows, he jumped into the world. They were the one running after him. <laughs> My brother, if God will answer our prayer, I pray that God will set you on fire. I pray that something will happen to you after this weekend and the whole of this university something will happen. Yeah. You see the hostels will not be quiet anymore. When things will break out and you will be running up and down with ah, the unbelievers in the hostels they will find it difficult to survive. They will be choked with your fire. You say. That's the first parameter of lukewarmness. When a man talks more than his life. When he speaks more than his action. When he had to talk, 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 talk before we see what is happening. It's a deceptive situation. But you know, I have come to discover that presently, presently, as I'm talking to you, presently, majority of what you call church now is what people say. We now have motivational speakers. I met somebody who was introducing himself as a man of God. He said, God has called him to motivational speaking. I say, my God, where did you find that call? <laughs> where did you find that kind of ministry? I tried to find out all the fivefold ministry. I don't see one that is motivational speaking. discovered that people have learned now to trade in words. They have learned now the principles of presentation. What you thought was power is ordinary speaking. You can put some several synonyms together and all of them ending in G, 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 G. And if he chooses to end it in zim, 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 or it goes car, 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 something, something, car, something, something, car, something, something, car, something, something, car, you will see uh, students, they will stand up, they will be gyrating, they say, yeah, 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 yeah. Ha. When you turn to the television, Christian stations, you see it. And I'm saying, Lord Jesus, what kind of lukewarmness has visited us? You say. Now I hear say, well, you know, I, I'm a man of God. I say, ah! You, you yourself, you are the one who said you are a man of God. Ah, I'm afraid. Genuine man of God don't talk about themselves. Correct man of God. No. By their fruits, you shall know them. No, by their speech. You say... 
You know, when I pick, I didn't know this for many years, you know. I didn't know. I didn't know that it is people that used to say such fabulous things about themselves that we see on the posters and everything. Until I went for a meeting. I went for a meeting somewhere. And, oh, this was an array of pastors, preachers. They were almost 20. And I was there to preach. And there was this introduction. And the man that was introduced was a great orator. He would pick this one, he would pick this one, he would pick this one, he would talk about this one. I didn't know. How did this man know everybody? I didn't know that he had passed paper to them that they should tell him what he want them to say about themselves. So when he came to me, he passed paper. He said, sir, how will you want to be introduced? I said, for what? He said, I'm Brother Gulena from Goko. <laughs> so, that was very, very difficult for him. He said, no, say something about yourself because all these people, they told me what to say. I said, hey. I said, no, just tell them I'm Brother Billy from Boko. He said, that would be a problem, sir. I said, for what? That's what I am. As he went on introducing, when he came to me, he said, I have a problem today. Then he began his problem. Oh my God. Then I was asking, so all those things you have been saying, it is the people that told you about themselves like that? He said, yes. Some said, by the grace of God, I'm an end time minister of fire and power. I have been ordained to shake the whole world. <laughs> One of the first manifestations of lukewarmness in any man's life is when you are more concerned about creating impression with your speech rather than creating expression with your life. You are a young person here. You are an old person here. You are a preacher here. Or you are a singer here. Have you passed that test? That parameter? Have you escaped it? That which does not emphasize who you are over and above what you say. John the Baptist, the people tried to get him to say. They say, what do you say about yourself? Are you this? Are you that? Are you this? He said, I am not. Ah, are you the one to come? And he said, I am not. Are you the Messiah? Are you the Christ? He said, I told you I am not. Ah, so what are you now? So that we can go and tell the people that sent us. He said, I'm nothing. I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. Ah. People say, you know, the man that you told, told us about the other time, he's baptized, everybody is going to him. He said, and so What? Said, did I not tell you it must increase? I must decrease. When a man is on fire, hallelujah, is more concerned about inner content than outward speech. And when your inner life is no more critical to you, but that you are eager to speak, you are eager to talk. I perceive you are in the intersection that I'm describing. 
Because the drive for excellence in your inner life had been substituted with a desire for presentation. And do you know why many, many people are supposed to be Christians and there are many, but they cannot create impact? It's because there is no substance inside. Can I go on to the next parameter? Eh? He said, you say, I am rich. I want you to see the oddity, how odd that statement is. If you meet any genuinely rich person, how many of you have met rich people before? Those that are genuinely rich. Let me see your hand up. All right. Hey, Brad Joshua, have you ever met any rich man who says, I am rich? Not even one. Not even one. If, you, if he will talk, what does a rich man say? He says, please, pastor, pray for me. I'm still struggling. <laughs> ah! When you meet very stickingly rich people, are you hearing me? Then they start wearing short knickers. I don't know whether it is fear that armed robbers will go and attack them that means them to do like that or what. But I have met very, very rich people at various points. And I've gone away with something that I couldn't explain. It is how eager they are in making more money. A rich person is afraid of declaring his riches because he knows that if he doesn't keep making money, he will soon become poor. If you meet a rich person and say, what's your prayer request? Consistently, over the years, <laughs> a rich person will still say, sir, I want you to please pray for me that this business may grow. <laughs> I say, ah! You know, number one, I believe that. I say, ah, this is lack of contentment. But the truth is this. Why you may call it lack of contentment? Those who genuinely have substance, they are more concerned about not losing it. So they are pressing for it. Now, when I meet a man like Paul, Brother Paul, Brother Paul, are you hearing me? With all that God used him to do, with the miracles that have happened in his life, handkerchief from his body was healing the sick. He had prayed for Eutychus who fell down and the man rose from the dead. He had been helped to go to the third heavens. When he was speaking in Philippians to the Philippians, he said, Brethren, I can't not myself to have done what? To have apprehended. What am I doing? I am pressing that I may know him. I said, Ah, at your age, you are still pressing to know him. Say, I'm forgetting what is behind. I am stretching if I may catch what lies ahead. These are very, very authentic, genuine spiritual men who are on fire until they died. They never confessed that they were rich. You say, I am rich. I hear someone say, 
I am spiritual. I see some of you, you put your hand in your pocket when the word of God is going, when somebody is preaching, say, Yes, what is he going to say? What's he going to say? What's he going to say? Ah! I'm afraid of you. Those that are genuinely on fire for God, they tremble at the word of God as if they know nothing. When a man begins to be lukewarm, he thinks more about what he thinks he has accumulated rather than what lies ahead of him. It's a manifestation of lukewarmness. I am rich. Can I ask you? Who are you? How far have you gone? What have you affected? Whom have you affected in your life? Something that disturbed me for years as I was growing up. I'm still growing, you know. One thing that affected me a lot was that every time I came to the word of God and I complained bitterly to God one day. Every time I came to the word of God, I was expecting that God will congratulate me and say, you have done well, you have tried. But every time I come and the word of God is coming to me, I see more things that I'm yet to do well or to know. To the extent that one day I say, God, you know, why are you always finding fault with me? When will you congratulate me now? To my surprise, the Lord just opened a scripture to me. He said, Except you are a bastard, the child that the father loves, he chastens. We know that no chastening for the moment is pleasant, is palatable. But it is for your good that you may be a partaker of his holiness. I remember writing in my note. And do you know, I've been writing my note for years. I'm still writing it. I have not yet graduated. I say, oh God, until you are satisfied with what you are looking for in my life, don't stop cutting me. So I'm eagerly longing that any opportunity I have to listen to the word of God, I'm taking my note. Even if it's a dog preaching, I'm saying, Lord, please, there is something I need. I want to go higher than where I am. When I meet young preachers, when I meet young brothers like you, bragging and talking big, when I see you joining the club of those who put big, big, big names on themselves, I say, do you plan to live long? Do you plan to go beyond where you are? How much have you seen that you are accepting anybody to put a crown on your head? If men like Paul said, I'm still pressing on. After they have planted all those great works and they have seen the kind of thing they saw and they have moved with God the way they moved, 
and they have seen raw anointing like they have seen. I don't understand why we have in this generation boasters. Empty clouds that promises that there will be rain and there is nothing. They will speak big but there is nothing there. You go there, there is nothing. There is activity, there is noise, there is dancing, there is jamboree, there is everything but there is nothing. I don't want to be like that. When that kind of thing begins to happen to me, I know these are the indices of lukewarmness. You've got to become lukewarm as no longer to have taste for something higher. You've got to become lukewarm for you now to begin to assess yourself and present yourself as that which has arrived. You've got to be lukewarm. Brothers and sisters, do you permit me to talk to you very freely? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Now, and I'm talking to you because I'm trusting that you will go for a long time. I'm going to hear of you many years to come. Yes. When God will have brought people like us to sit back and watch you on the platform of ministry. When you will be leading the great move for which we have been crying. When you will be standing to declare the mystery of the kingdom of God with firmness. I'm looking forward to your days. But if it's not going to end as a mirage. Can I tell you that those that are blessed are not those who say I am rich. Do you know what Jesus said? Blessed are those who know they are poor in the spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What do you have? Every time I look at what I have got so far, compared with what I have not got, I am very miserable. One day I'm listening to a man of God. He brought a scripture from somewhere and to my shame I say, what? You mean that scripture is in the Bible and I don't know where it is? I say, God, I thought I'd been reading my Bible. Where is this man coming from? The Lord say yes. It's just to tell you that there are many things you don't know yet. Keep pressing on. Who are you that you say you are rich? What do you know that you are putting your hand in your pocket? Do you know that some of you, as soon as they make you fellowship, uh, president or something. You are so like this. You are the supervisor. You don't tremble at the word of God again. Your own classmates, they are your classmates. Oh, these girls that you are running, that are running up and are carrying water for you. Doing this. They are your classmates. Oh. They are your classmates. Oh. You didn't deliver them. But the way I hear you say, eh, let that my daughter come. Who are you? <laughs> when were you born? And when were you born again? Who taught you that language? You that ought to bury your head and say, Father, Father, help me, advance me, push me forward. You are quickly ready to collect homage. 
You don't know that those who collect home age is that they have got to what we call home age. Are you ready to die now? That you want people to pay homage to you. Just one year, two years in the fellowship, you are no more normal. You carry your shoulder like this. I just went from a campus. I'm come, I came from a campus the other week. And we had a meeting, quite big meeting in that campus. It's also a JCCF kind of meeting. And the whole place was jam-packed. And I was going to meet with the leaders. And everybody was pastor. I am the only brother. Ha! And they don't know how to introduce me because all the fellowship uh, president, they are all pastors, pastor mama, and all of that. And then they want to call me up. They said, eh, eh, our father, who is also our brother. <laughs> I said, it's all right. And one of them came and said, Sir, why are you still a brother? I said, because I'm still a brother. I'm still looking for help. I want God to help me. I'm still a brother yet. <laughs> you say you are rich. When the call comes, those who need help, you do like this. Can I tell you what happens to those who say they are rich? Can I tell you? Turn your Bibles. Go to 1 Samuel very quickly. 1 Samuel. This was the prayer and the praise of Hannah after God has answered her prayer. 1 Samuel chapter 2. I want you to quickly say it. Verse 3 says, Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are what? Are weighed. Verse 5. They that were full, what have they done? They have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren has born seven. And she that has many children is wax, what? Feeble. When God visited Mary, the mother of Jesus, and she also was going to begin to pray a prayer which you find in Luke chapter 1. I want you to see what she also said in Luke chapter 1 verse 52 and 53 he said he has put down what? the mighty from their seats and he has exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich, what has he done to them? He sent them empty. Brothers and sisters, those who say they are rich, they will always go away. How? Empty. I found that the key the key unto fervent spiritual experience is recognition, constant recognition of our poverty. Constant cry for more of Jesus because we can never have enough. So when a man says, I'm rich, that means he has lost appetite. He has lost appetite for something more from God. 
lukewarmness is that thing that kills your appetite. It kills your hunger. It doesn't allow you to go far more with God. He say, I am rich. Number two, I have increased with what? Goods. That's the next parameter of lukewarmness. What is that? Obsession with goods rather than with God. He said, I have increased with goods, not with God. Brothers, I don't know how to tell you, but let me tell you something very quickly. When goods become more important to you, when physical goods physical materials the clothes the shoe your head heart or head gear when the kind of car you ride begin to be dominant in your consideration I want to inform you you are becoming what? look what You know those that God has encountered in lives. And I'm telling you, almost all the brothers that God started with, with fire, one of the things I know about them is that goods don't mean much to them. 